background about you first. So my background, just so you guys know, I have a master's degree in social work and I work for a company called Aging Care Advocates. I graduated from the University of Georgia. So, yeah, the Bulldogs, they call it UGA. So I work for a company called Aging Care Advocates and what I like about this pamphlet is it has all our pictures on the back. So some people like to see what I'm talking about. This is our team. Everyone in our company, we all have master's degrees. It was founded by Genevieve 10, 11 years ago. And what we do is we help manage the care for seniors, like if they don't have children in the area and they're starting to not be able to take care of things themselves. Sometimes we'll help with like placement in a community. Uh, a lot of our cases involve clients who have dementia and the children live out of state and they just they can't really help enough with the parent and so we step in. So that's that's the company I work for. If you guys have questions about that, you can ask me afterwards. How long has this company been existing? Genevieve has been around for 11 years and it is a very ethical company. I, 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 I was really impressed with the policy manual when I was hired. It's, it's all about the code of ethics as a social worker. We have certain rights we're supposed to follow about self-determination. So she personally like, reviews like the billing statements at the end of each month to make sure that the charges are ethical. So I feel good working for a company and my coworkers are awesome. How many people work? We have 11 care managers and director of operations and then Genevieve and someone who helps with all the technical stuff. So our total staff is 14 people. We're a small company and I would be the care manager for Pinellas County. So if you guys have questions, if you know someone at home who's not safe, things like that, you can talk with me afterwards. I did case management in the hospital for seven years. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with what the social worker does in the hospital, but that's basically what I do in the community. It's the same thing. That, what I do during my day job has nothing to do with what I'm talking about today, other than I'm advocating for seniors by educating about being healthy. And I advocate for seniors during my job. Are you raising your hand? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I'm really excited to be giving this talk. Um, it's healthy aging, it's a top 10 list. So my background on the side, besides doing case management and working for the hospital, is I have experience in the alternative health field. So I'm a licensed massage therapist, I'm a certified health counselor, I'm a personal trainer. I have all these like alternative health certifications. And this is a compilation of all the information I feel is important that I have gathered in the last 15 years. So I've had personal experience with autoimmune disease. I've had personal experience with cancer. So I, mean, I feel like the information I'm going to share is relevant to that. There's some kind of a meeting at 1.30, is this it? Or this is an aging, healthy aging presentation. You're welcome to come in. And I'm happy to see everyone here. Um, what I wanted to do is have a sign in list. Yeah. I just started it, yeah. Um, this is the, here, I'll let you guys pass this around so you can take one. Although I don't really, it's okay. I normally don't like to pass out the information at the beginning because people like look at, they look at that piece of paper and they don't look at me. But, but that's okay. If you want it to reference what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah, I think Gail was gonna get a sign-in sheet, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass this around. Is this a sign-in sheet? So let me get started. Um, what I like to do is ask you all questions, so I'll be kind of interactive a little more. So I'm going to give the presentation, but I want you all to get something out of it. So the first thing I normally do is an exercise that's called paired sharing. And what you do is you turn to the person next to you, and then I ask a question. <laughs> and then I'm going to ring the bell after 30 seconds, and we'll switch. So. The question, and then we'll have you, is um, 
what's one thing you can do to improve your health and why are you not doing that thing? <laughs> okay? So, just turn to the person next to you and the person with the lighter colored hair goes first. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say switch, so the first person go. What's one thing you can do to improve your health and why you're not doing that? Go ahead, you too. Yeah. You took it first. Okay, so go ahead and switch to the other person if you haven't switched. Okay, okay everyone. Okay, so we're going to bring it back up to the front. Okay, okay, well I got to ring the bell. Oh, we got talkers in here. I like that. Okay, so I'm wondering if there's anyone brave. Yeah, we don't have enough of those. When Gail comes back in, I'll have her make copies for us. For what? Um, the top ten list. You want to give me one and I'll have her make Okay, so coming back to the front of the room. So can anyone, sh any brave soul, are they willing to share what's one thing they could be doing to improve their health? Exercise. Exercise? Exercise. Yeah. Okay, what, what was the thing about sugar? Sugar. Less sugar. Less sugar. Those are the two main ones. You know, I gave this talk back in June. Oh, perfect. Um, maybe 10. Yeah. So, so we have an official sign-in sheet. Yeah. As opposed to the other one. So if you sign your name. We have an unofficial and official. So, okay, so exercise and sugar. Now, the real question is, why uh, are we not doing that? Sugar tastes so good. Okay, okay, so part of you wants to do it and part of you doesn't. Okay, what were you going to say? Well, my personal situation, everybody else is different, is it's just too darn hot and humid, and normally I would be out walking for miles, but I can't take it's and too hot. Medication that says no, you get over Early. Right, right. And what were you going to say? If you're over 65, um, you can go to the YMCA. It's not very far away. The YMCA? And it's, it's free. It's oh, it's free. Free. Oh, it's free. It's called Silver Sneakers. Silver So this is information that one of the participants is sharing that if you go to, is it any YMCA or just the local one? Any YMCA and you're over 65. It's free. And it's really nice. Uh, and, and, and it's packed. Yeah. Packed so with pack people. Pack with people. Okay, you have to have a particular HMO, people are saying. Okay, so I want to bring it back. The point of that is that it, this subject of healthy aging is relevant, and no matter where we're at in our lives, whether we're 18 or 80, uh, we know that we should be doing things, but we don't do them. So it's like the human condition. So that's where I begin this presentation, and that in order to get from, we'll just say A to B, that like what it takes to get there, that's what this talk is about. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about neuroscience and what goes on in the brain that prevents us from being able to go from A to B. So one interesting fact I'm gonna go into in a bit is that the axons and the dendrites of your neurons, they're thicker and there are more of them from childhood. And so Daniel Siegel calls that the superhighway. 
So what happens is whatever you've been programmed from when you were younger, food-wise, habit-wise, it's like the superhighway. Like when you're under stress or anything, you do that. And the only way that you can begin to create new habits, he calls those new neural networks or dirt road. It's like, which is quicker, the dirt road or the highway? The dirt road, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, the highway is quicker, so that's what we do. But, so we have to be patient. Who are you quoting? Um, the, the man's name is Daniel Siegel. It's S-I-E-G-E-L. He has a branch called Interpersonal Neurobiology, which is a big fancy name for some neuroscience information. And let me pull up the presentation. Uh, okay, so number 10 on the list is be willing to change what you eat. So what this means is you, and this is, this is I'm gonna talk about this when you, if you want to get from A to B, our goal, the, the road to get us there, the main word is integration. You want brain integration. And the way you do that is by bringing all parts of yourself together and, and taking small action steps to get from A to B. If you try and force yourself, you, ultimately you end up on these two riverbanks of rigidity or chaos. So being willing is the very beginning of moving forward. And, and that's why I ask people, they say lower sugar. But I'm saying, do you, do you want to lower your sugar intake? Because if you don't, then you're not, you're not gonna get where you wanna go. So you have to be willing. That's step number one. And I'm gonna pass these around if anyone didn't get, yeah. The top 10 list? Yeah, the, that's the top 10 list. That's a cheat sheet for you guys. Um, so I, before I go into the talk, I want to do just a teeny bit of brain science. I promise not to do too much. So the part of your brain up here, it's called the prefrontal cortex, and there are more neurons up here. And there's, it's called executive functioning. You have things like morality, intuition, fear modulation, it's, it's higher reasoning. And, and then the other part of your brain, it's called the limbic system and it's the brain stem. And it's the fight, flight, freeze mode. So that's, and then, and then Daniel Siegel talks about going down this river of brain integration. He calls it the fast flow. It stands for flexibility, adaptability, and stability. So you want a, an equal amount of flexibility, adaptability, and stability. And as you're going down this, on either riverbank is rigidity or chaos. So I'm gonna apply this to food. Oftentimes when you diet, in the beginning, there's a lot of rigidity around it. So that's one end of the riverbank. And then after a while, you can't maintain that rigidity, and so you flip to the other riverbank, which is chaos, and you just eat everything. And so what we want is that an, an equal amount of flexibility, adaptability, and stability as you go down the river of brain integration. So that's the, so I, I laid that out. And I already explained how we have to pave the road. So it starts out a dirt road and we have to pave it if we want to create new habits. So basically it takes patience and practice as in action steps repeated over time to actually change your brain and change your habits. So that's why you have to be willing to change what you eat before you can begin that process. 